GoodRx, MAC Growth via Acquisitions, and are you comf- comfortable with the net losses? Hi, I'm in An, um, I'm an investor in GoodRx. Uh, currently, as a part of recording, I have vested interest, so please practice independent thinking. Uh, Q4 results came out. Uh, the revenue for the particular quarter was 213.3 million. However, the net profit was negative 40 million. So I'm wondering, like, mm, uh, for, because they also gave the whole figures for the whole financial year, the revenue went up, but the, it was still making a loss. So I uh, invested more time to go and understand what is it. What is really different from between what's the difference between good RX and you know uh, my other type of portfolio like REITs? Uh, so let's head straight. Now, uh, as you can see, there I do have a iPad here because uh, I've started uh, documenting down all the numbers, and I'm taking this video like a journal. And in fact, uh, this is going to be turned into a podcast also. Um, what I can see right now is that uh, for people who like to listen to the podcast, let me see if I can place the video link in the description such that uh, you can view such in the event that you wish to have a visual uh, of what I'm referring to. But I'm just going to narrate out everything. Two aspects, uh, as suggested by the title, uh, monthly active use consumers plus the net losses. Uh, first thing is that uh, for Q4, the monthly active consumers right, it remained at six point four million. That was almost equal, that was identical to Q three two uh of two oh two one. It's also six point four million. And if I compare quarter four to the previous quarter four of uh two oh two oh, which had five point six, uh, of course there's an increase. Um one thing I just wanted to know is that uh, on hindsight uh, GoodRx is also acquiring another another business called Vital Care. Uh, of course, I have not gone into details of what Vital Care can contribute, uh, but my idea is that Vital Care does have its own consumers and it should increase the monthly active consumers. Because if that's true, uh, my only concern is. Uh, would good RX grow via acquisitions inorganically? Or would it be possible that the current offerings itself can attract consumers organically? Uh, I don't have a straight answer to that. Um, but of course, looking from a general uh, business point of view, of course, if the numbers can increase, that would be good. Uh, it's just one point I just want to like, take note. Because uh, someone in the community asked me, so what's my conclusion for good RX? Uh, but this, I don't have a conclusion, but these are the points that I'm, I'm observing. Or I, uh, for the subscription plans, um, quarter 3, 2, 1 was at 1.129 million, and quarter 4, 2, 1 is 1.21 million in an increase. Uh, when I invest in such businesses that had very many arms, right? I think good RX did a very good thing about like uh, being, uh, I think. There's this particular, you know, research and prevention, uh, diagnosis and the treatment and adherence, and they wrote down the various business arms that's taking care of each individual, uh, uh, the three stages of the consumer healthcare journey. So uh, when I invest in the business, I'm just taking note. Okay, what is the business segment that contributes the most revenue? Right, because I want to make sure that that uh, that business segment is able to keep growing. Even though I do know that management might want to uh, take some time to uh, grow the other business segments, but currently my understanding is that uh, the two business segments that I'm looking at is this prescription transaction revenue and the subscription revenue. Definitely quarter four to one. Uh, the figure right now is at one five eight point eight. Uh, previous quarter was like 155.7 yeah, so there's a marginal growth right even though you know the, the entire financial year had a lot of uh, 
had a lot of revenue growth as compared to 2020 but I, I'm just kind of like hmm it's like it feels like it's slowing down I'm not sure if it's seasonal or one time off so this is something that I'll just continue to document down in my journey uh, in my journal uh, the subscription revenue uh, yes from 16.2 it moved up to 17.4 while I was in the washroom I'm just thinking like this feels like a star hub and it had various business segments so it feels like hmm I need to be very clear of if I continue to invest in good RX what is the original uh, intention am I able to you know as an investor be comfortable that hey me probably if the growth rates are not what it is probably I'll trim down my positions okay uh, definitely cash flow uh, it's at 49.8 million as compared to 48.6 million for Q421 and Q321 respectively um, so what's the conclusion the conclusion is uh, I'm looking forward to the next quarter's uh, information because with information coming in there I can make the best decision like to say oh yes I forgot about the net losses um, I'm a newbie investor right um, so I went and googled this key phrase how to account executive compensation in my profit statement because uh, there is this concept of non-GAAP non-GAAP and also GAAP uh, accounting principles well, the Google search results when I read it now I'm thinking like hey why if one if, if I use the non-GAAP the numbers are positive there's no there's no net loss but when I use the GAAP print, uh, accounting principles there is a loss um, something I'm not kind of comfortable is or perhaps I wonder if seek more clarity is to understand hey, if I'm really a bit from taking a stand from the business owner point of view I'm, uh, that means I own GoodRx as an entire business right uh, it seems like the gap principles makes the number even more conservative and makes it more realistic why? because the stock based compensations cost right is being accounted in the gap and based on that uh, those google search results i read it i feel that that makes more sense because it's transferring part of the value of the company via the stock compensation so when we are transferring when i am transferring value out of the company to uh, to the personnel uh, it, it, somehow the value does diminishes so uh, when I look at uh, US companies right now I will consider gap because that's the most conservative and it reflects the true cost right uh, that example from Google said that it's like in a nutshell, you're transferring future value out of the company to the personnel in the present value. So, uh, yeah, I'm. that's the next thing I'm kind of like taking a look at what is happening. Uh, though I understand that the stock-based compensation, uh, in a nutshell acronym SBC, uh, it is accounted in the, in the profit and statement at the top in SGA selling uh, sales and marketing general and administrative expenses in that portions so uh, I want to take note for group RX I see that the SBC is coming down um, and in the next quarter I should not see that figure growing back up again right probably when it got listed uh, there was maybe a one time or perhaps maybe a one financial year worth of uh, SBC cost but maybe into the second year of its listing that number should come down because if it doesn't come down um, that's also like another uh, sign that hey what's really happening to this company is like uh, how is the management able uh, 
to be able to get uh, so much stock based compensation though I know that it avoids the impacting the cash flow uh, but I'm just kind of mindful like you know it's just like transferring value out of the company so that's the part I'm, I'm not kind of comfortable with so uh, I'll be monitoring the next quarter results so that uh, I can get a better picture of what yeah what's really happening in good rx so as of now you can say that I'm holding on to my positions yep that's what I wanted to feel in hey should I continue to buy hold or sell if you found that this uh, video has uh, uh, added some value to you uh, you can consider subscribing if you have a friend who is also an investor in GoodRx, forward this video to them.